Welcome, defense and security enthusiasts of the Philippines. We gather here on the Pinoy Guard YouTube channel to explore the fascinating aspects of our national defense world. From the dynamics of tensions in the South China Sea to strategic innovations that will reshape Philippine defense, we are here to provide the latest information with enthusiasm. In this episode, we will discuss a major step in the modernization of Philippine defense, a significant budget allocation for 2025 and additional support from the United States. We will also explore how the Apache AW-64 helicopter could be a game-changer in enhancing our airstrike capabilities and the latest opportunities in acquiring attack helicopters. Don't miss the intriguing details and the major impact of these strategic decisions on our national security. Before we dive into this exciting discussion, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and activate the notification bell. Together, we can increase awareness and pride in our national defense. With 50 billion Philippine pesos allocated for the armed forces of the Philippines in 2025, plus an additional $500 million from the United States, we are at a critical juncture in Philippine defense history. What's particularly interesting here is how these funds are being directed. The United States has stipulated that the $500 million assistance must be used exclusively for acquiring American-made weapons and equipment. This is not only about strengthening defense but also deepening the strategic relationship between the Philippines and the United States. This move is becoming increasingly relevant given the rising tensions in the South China Sea and the Indo-Pacific region. Now, let's talk about the Philippines' grand plan, Re-Horizon 3. One of its priorities is to enhance the 15th Strike Wing with more capable attack platforms, especially heavy attack helicopters. This is where the Apache AW-64 comes into play. With its global combat reputation and advanced combat capabilities, the Apache AW-64 E Guardian, equipped with longbow radar and precision strike capabilities, could be a game-changer for the Philippine tactical air power. Looking back, the Philippines has long explored options for acquiring heavy attack helicopters. One opportunity was through the U.S. Excess Defense Articles EDA, program. This program offers surplus military equipment at very affordable prices. The Philippines previously attempted to acquire the Bell Law 1 Cobra, but the plan did not materialize. Later, the T-129 ATAK from Turkey was also considered, but delivery issues and sanctions hindered the process. The EDA program offers a golden opportunity for the Philippines. Through EDA, the Philippines could acquire advanced attack helicopters like the Apache without depleting its budget. This is not only a cost-effective move but also a strategic one, strengthening interoperability with the United States and reinforcing the bilateral defense alliance. If acquired through EDA, Apache helicopters could become a key asset in maintaining control over contested areas like the South China Sea. With the prospects of modernization and increased funding, the Philippines is on the right track to play a larger role in Southeast Asian regional security, strengthen ties with allies like the United States, and enhance its air power to face future challenges. The Excess Defense Articles EDA, program is a U.S. government initiative that offers surplus or used military equipment to allied and strategic partner countries, including the Philippines, at very low or no cost. The equipment offered through this program is typically still in good condition and operational but no longer needed by the U.S. military due to replacement with newer technology or changes in U.S. defense structure. How the EDA program works 1. Eligibility for EDA Only countries that are U.S. allies or strategic partners qualify to receive equipment under the EDA program. The aim of the program is to enhance allied defense capabilities, support regional stability, and encourage interoperability between the recipient's military and the U.S. too. Types of equipment offered. EDA may include a range of military equipment, from combat vehicles, aircraft, helicopters, ships, communication systems, to weapons and ammunition. All equipment offered is no longer used by the U.S. military but can still be highly valuable to the recipient country. 3. Costs and Requirements. The recipient country usually only needs to cover transportation costs and any repairs needed to bring the equipment to operational condition. This makes EDA a very economical way for countries like the Philippines to modernize their armed forces without purchasing new equipment at full price. Why EDA matters for the Philippines? The EDA program is particularly relevant for the Philippines in its effort to modernize the armed forces. Given the Philippines' limited defense budget compared to some neighboring countries, 
EDA provides an opportunity to acquire high-tech military equipment at a much more affordable cost. The Philippines has previously utilized EDA to acquire various equipment, such as L-1 Huey helicopters and several naval patrol vessels. If the Philippines successfully acquires heavy attack helicopters like the Apache A-64 through the EDA program, it will gain a high-capability combat platform without incurring significant costs like purchasing new helicopters. This would be a major advantage in enhancing airstrike capabilities and defending national interests in contested areas like the South China Sea. EDA also allows the Philippines to improve interoperability with the U.S. military in joint exercises and operations, strengthening the already established defense relationship. In the context of AFP modernization, this program represents a significant opportunity to obtain advanced military technology at lower costs, while also reinforcing strategic alliances with the United States. If the Philippines can wisely leverage this opportunity, it will become a more formidable power, ready to face future challenges and maintain stability and national sovereignty in the Indo-Pacific region. Thank you for watching this episode on Pinoy Guard. If you found this information useful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. Join us in understanding and supporting our national defense. See you in the next video, and keep supporting the security and sovereignty of the Philippines.